You want to bring more authenticity to your cast of character. Here are six ways to create a more authentic antagonist. The first way to an authentic antagonist is the devotion way. Now, devotion here articulates with both loyalty and ambition. The, the two adjacent ways, the two most direct ways to create a devotion or a variation of the devotion style. Then you've got ambition. Now, ambition articulates with devotion and freedom. And um, you'll see that this logic applies to all of six uh, sub-models, all the six paths in each of the each of the antagonist profiles, so wherever it is reckless, relatable, gorgeous, likable, each path, each way relates directly with two other ways which are adjacent to it. And there's also a directly opposite way. Uh, here for freedom, for example, we have the loyalty path which opposes itself directly to freedom, meaning that you can create an authentic antagonist which shares both traits of freedom and loyalty, but by doing so, you're more likely to fall into the devotion or the ambition path. So rather than trying to combine freedom and loyalty, you may, it may be easier to create a devotion or ambition type of character. Uh, same thing on the other side. If you were to create a despair type of character and uh, you want to create some uh, you want to create some hybrid model between hybrid uh, between uh, despair and devotion. You rather create a loyalty type of character or a regret type of character in order to get um, a better synthesis of these two types. So each of these types, each of these uh, ways, are functioning in complementarity with another way, and they're also functioning with adjacent ways. So that's where you'll be able to establish relationship with between characters, between antagonists more easily in your future, in the in your story. The first path to an authentic antagonist is the path of devotion. Now, devotion will have a direct relationship with loyalty, and the two paths are cross created, meaning that if you have a loyalty character or if you have a devotion character, they can switch from one path to the other quite easily. Uh, more so, when, when it comes to devotion, you can change from devotion to loyalty more easily than from devotion to, um, to ambition. Even if ambition has the same distance uh, with, devotion, with, with loyalty on the, on the schema. Now, devotion originates from a debt. Devotion originates from an action, maybe a cr uh, an action during a crisis or an event in your story, which will create a debt from one character to the next. However, the devotion should be expressed freely through the whole story. Because if there isn't this dimension of a free execution, it is not devotion anymore. And there it becomes full, or it can become full loyalty. The, the expression of devotion implies that the character is willing to follow another character, or to support another character, to advise another character, or even to compete with another character sometimes. Because uh, whether you're an advisor, a rival, an arbiter, or an enticer, the path of devotion is still open, but it will be expressed differently. The only common point to all these expressions is it, that it should be expressed freely. The second path to an authentic antagonist is the path of ambition. Now, ambition may be one of the most effective ways to create an authentic antagonist or a memorable antagonist, which we'll see later. Now, ambition defines an authentic antagonist more so than a memorable antagonist because ambition by itself is more individualistic in nature than collectivist. Whereas, as, you'll see, as we'll see later, a memorable antagonist or a memorable character in general will need to display a collective aspect, a group-focused aspect. 
Now, ambition, the goal of ambition is expressing one's identity. The, the finality of uh, expressing one's identity will be expressed in very different manners. And the two other keywords presented here only apply to an authentic antagonist. Because uh, you can have a gorgeous antagonist, which is ambitious. You can have a reckless antagonist, which is ambitious. You can have a likable antagonist, which displays signs of ambition. Now, in the case of an authentic antagonist, ambition will be displayed through phlegmatism and some reservation. Now, both of them are presented here in mirror. They're presented here um, with a certain form of of duality because they are complementary phlegmatism here express what's displayed by the character whereas reservation here um, express what's not displayed reservation is not expressed directly reservation could be you, you could consider that reservation is expressed through non-action whereas phlegmatism is um, the, the choice of word here implies that phlegmatism and reserved are both constant, but they're expressed in different moments. Phlegmatism will be expressed when a character is in a situation of crisis, whereas reservation will be expressed when a character is in a moment of comfort. So, said in another way, during a crisis, an ambitious antagonist will need to remain phlegmatic because she'll need to find a solution to pursue her ambition. And during a moment of comfort, an ambitious antagonist will need to remain reserved because she doesn't want, or she can't maybe, because she isn't trustworthy enough and trusting also, she can't display her ambition too much. She can share the object of her ambition too much because there would be um, hindrances, there would be a repercussion on her if she were to do so. The third path to an authentic antagonist is the path of freedom. Freedom can be expressed in multiple ways. The end goal of freedom, the why your character wants to be free, is freely chosen by you. The execution, however, will need to be resolute and stolid. Here, both of these adjectives, both of these keywords apply to situations of crisis and situations of comfort. Your character, your character who wants to be free, must be fully focused on her freedom, on her will to access freedom. Therefore, her resolution and her propensity to remain calm, to remain inexpressive at time, or that's what can be seen by the exterior, will be core to her ascension to freedom. Now, if you have to choose a goal, and it's confusing, Remember that freedom is the ultimate expression of individuality. The goal of freedom can be to express one's existence. Much like what you'll see in the uh, reckless existence type profile. Expressing one's freedom is expressing one's individuality. Then you'll choose what's your character individuality. Where does she come from? What did she lack? What did she? What does she want and what does she need? And from there, you will express why she's unique, why she's different from other characters. The resolute part, you have to focus on the, on the execution, if the execution is the, different, the difficult part for you. Remember that resolution the resolution of a character, wherever she is in a situation of crisis or comfort, should be unfaltering. Your character should consistently be focused on her freedom, 
to the point because you don't have to be so subtle about it to the point where it can be expressed as an obsession the fourth path to an authentic character is the path of despair now contrary to what may be expected a desperate character needs not to express her despair or on the contrary we'd rather argue that expressing a certain form of joy a certain form of motivation a certain form of enticement from a despair character from a desperate individual would be more effective so if you have to execute this part make your character excessive give her specific mannerism and both play a different role excessiveness here will be translated through the behavior it is the behavior of the character wherever it's a strength or a weakness when it comes to mannerism think of quirks think of certain clothes certain poses certain expressions mannerism really falls into the category of quirks and of what will make your character memorable whereas excessiveness defines the degree the potential of relatability that people will generate through your character this character really is a, a, a fake character she can't be seen desperate or it would completely invalidate her whole uh, her whole process her whole method this character needs to play a role this character needs to pretend it's essential to mask her despair the fifth path to an authentic antagonist is the path of regret now much like despair a regretful antagonist will have to make use of deception a regretful antagonist will have to hide her regret she'll have to uh, play a role she'll have to act in a manner which does not translate a regret or at least not directly because a certain character may see a regret through these actions much like for the desperate character this despair can transpire this despair can be seen if one is focused enough to see the despair now contrary to the desperate antagonist and there much like the ambitious or much like the freedom type of character the regretful character will be persevering and this perseverance may seem to be a paradox you know you you're not persevering in your regret that's not how it should be read you're persevering because you want to repair something you're persevering because you hope you can uh, you can have a better ending you can have uh, another way of life therefore this character will be hasty at time here again much like the ambition type of character or much like the freedom type of character but the expression will be quite different here and it will be seen afterwards in the loyalty type of character the regretful antagonist is persevering which gives her which grants her a layer of stability she will be consistent in the research of another way of another path in order to get rid of a regret now why is it between freedom um, not between, between despair and between loyalty or in another way why is it between the less stable path and the most stable path because it shares traits of both now it shares the deceit part of the regretful of the um, disparate antagonist and it shares the persevering part of the loyal antagonist now where does that leave hasty hasty here is the key word which will characterize the regretful antagonist a regretful antagonist is an antagonist with a scar and this scar here is regret this antagonist 
does not want to be exposed to regret anymore. So any time that she will be exposed to an element, to an event, to a character, to an environment which reminds her of regret, she will act in a hasty manner. The sixth path to an authentic antagonist is the path of loyalty. Now, loyalty implies that your character, that your antagonist, is loyal to principles, to rules, to themes, to ideals, to symbols, not to individuals or organizations per se. Your character, your antagonist, is loyal to a set of themes, a set of idea that she'll judge fundamental. Now, that's the goal, that's what defines your loyal antagonist. Now, how is it executed? Your loyal antagonist will be an established antagonist. Your loyal antagonist will be a settled antagonist. The reason why this character follow these principles, this rule, should be established quite fast in the story as early as possible in order to define her established nature this character is constant this character is consistent this character is settled so both established and settled will apply to situations of crisis and comfort and what's the difference in their meaning now settled here mean that your character's actions, your character's actions and reactions will be transcribed through settled means, through settled manners. The resources your character will use will be sustainable, trustworthy resources. Your character does not go for fickle resources. She does not go for fickle people. She does not trust fickle individual or principles. Now, the difference with established is that established relates to the behavior, not the actions. Your character's behavior or strengths or weaknesses will be established through your whole story and by the beginning of your story. Now, loyalty, if you have to translate it through, uh, through behaviors, through, stre through, uh, through strengths and weaknesses, choose strengths and weaknesses which will directly relate to the principles the character has chosen to follow. Because now, loyalty means that your character is faithful to principle. It does not mean that these principles are valid in any sense. It does not mean that these principles uh, are acceptable, that they're uh, honorable. No, it does not mean that. It just means that the character has operated a high degree of emotional attachment to this principle. So, the behavior of your character, the establishment of the behavior of your character should emerged directly from these principles. If you enjoyed this content and want to know more on this topic, check our video on the six surefire way to create an antagonist.